Are you rejoicing this morning? Uh, can you feel the excitement in the air this morning? Hallelujah. Come on, let's give God a hand shout, hand praise. Hallelujah. You know, he allowed us to wake up this morning. I heard something this, uh, this weekend, and uh, I want to ask you this morning, did you bring your charger for your phone? How many's got a charger for their phone? Raise up your hand. Your charger for your phone, did you forget? Some of you forgot it at home, right? Well, I heard something this yesterday, and George Myers was saying, if we're on our way to church and we forgot our charger, we'll go back to the house to get our charger because our phone will have one little block and we don't have any energy. Well, you know this morning, you can get, are you ready to get plugged up to Jesus? Let's get plugged up. Get your spiritual wire and get yourself plugged up to Jesus. Because God has an awesome word planned for you today and you have to be plugged up. You have to be in tune this morning with him because if you're not, you can be here this morning and you can not even, you can be thinking about what you left at the house. You can be thinking of all kinds of problems that are going on, and you are not plugged up. So let's get plugged up. Get your cord. Come on. Uh, okay. Let's get our, get our cord. Okay, let, I got to interpret this in Spanish. Okay, y'all hang on. Tengo que decirles, quiero preguntarles, ¿trajeron su cordón de pluguear el teléfono, su cargador? Hermanos, hermana, trajeron su cargador. Muchas veces se nos olvida el cargador en la casa y regresamos para atrás a la casa a traer el cargador. Porque el teléfono nomás trae un bloque de carga. Esta mañana vamos a agarrar el cordón espiritual y vamos a pluguearnos con Jesús esta mañana para recibir la palabra. Porque podemos estar aquí, pero estamos pensando en lo que dejamos en la casa. O estamos pensando en el problema y tantas otras cosas y no nos plugueamos a Jesús. So are we ready to plug up with Jesus this morning? Garra tu cordón espiritual. Get your cord, your spiritual cord. Come on, let's do it. Get your spiritual cord. Let's plug up to Jesus. Where's the Bible? Give me a Bible. Let's get plugged up. Come on, vamos a pluguearnos en Jesús. Okay, say, Lord, forgive me of my sins. Cleanse me from all unrighteousness. And cleanse me, Father. In Jesus' name, open up my heart today to receive your word. In Jesus' name, amen. Señor, abre mi corazón. Perdóname. Por todos mis pecados, en el nombre de Jesús. Amen. All right, let's get plugged up. Let's praise Him this morning. Hallelujah. Come on, everybody, put your hands together.
continually be on my mouth. Can anybody agree? Are y'all awake this morning? Can anybody agree that the Lord is good? And his mercy shall endure through all generations. Come on, let's sing how great he is. He's great. Come on, sing out. And mighty, for he is great, greatly to be great. Yes, you are. For he is great, in mercy, I will bless his holy name. For he is great, in power, for he is great, fortress is our God. For he is great, in strength and honor, I will bless the Lord of all. 
Come on, in your own words. Come on, and tell him. We don't need music to tell him how great he is. Father, Lord, you are worthy to be praised, God. Lord, we worship you, Father. Lord, everything within us, God, just reaches out to you right now, God. In this very moment.
Everybody, come on, sing this. I know that you are for. Come on, come on. I know that you are for me. I know that you will never forsake me in my weaknesses. I know that you have come now, even if to write upon my heart. To and of his mercy. doesn't matter what we did yesterday or what we did this morning. His mercy and his grace abides. It is ever true and ever last. don't leave that song as I was standing there and I was worshiping you know this being the season of Thanksgiving I was thinking about my dad my dad's 81 and I was talking to him a couple weeks ago and he was telling me that he had joined a gym and he got a personal trainer and I said yay daddy (laughs) and you know while that seems funny in the natural you know He went, he joined a gym, he's got him a personal trainer. But you know what I'm most thankful for? Out of 
the 55 years I've known that man, he's been my personal trainer. He's taught me to know and to love the one that saved me, the one that has kept me, the one that has kept my family, the one that is for me. You know, if I know nothing in this world, the one thing I know that my earthly father taught me about my heavenly father is that God is for me. He's not there to punish me. He's not there to beat me up. He's just there to love me. And he loved me so much he sent his son to die just for me. Daddy would always tell me, he said, you know, he said, if he had only came for just you, he would have done that. But yet he did it for the whole world. And you know, you need a personal trainer this morning. And that personal trainer is the Holy Spirit. Because he wants to teach you that your Heavenly Father is for you. Yes, we live in this sin-cursed world and we have to deal with things. We have to deal with death, the loss of loved ones, the loss of friends. You know, we have to deal with financial problems. Sometimes you deal with not having enough food. I mean, let's be honest, right? But he is for you. And if we can just learn to know the one that is for you and to operate in his kingdom then he will always be there for us. He will never let us down. Not one time has he ever forsaken us or forsaken our family. You know, my dad is the one who taught me, but Papa John D and, and, and Sister Velma here, they taught their son. And then when we came together, because we both had that foundation, God has been the foundation of our marriage. That is what has held us together. That's what we've taught our girls. And you know, the sad thing is, you know, sometimes your kids grow up and they go out in the world. Anybody goes out in the world. And you know, the devil is there to lie to you. And if you take his lie and make it your truth, then it's truth to you. But it doesn't mean it's truth to God. And it doesn't mean it's true according to God's word. Amen? So you have to know the one that is for you. You have to know his word. You have to know that if you operate according to the principles of God, everything he's promised in that book is yours. You know, Brother Lemuel coming, and, and I already had begun to get a little taste and a little understanding, you know, through knowledge and, and rhema coming from his word, that as I spend my time and I meditate on that word, that I had already begun to get just a little glimpse of what he came and he taught us. And I'm telling you, you need to get this series and you need to get it in your spirit. Because when it becomes part of your spirit, then you're going to speak that. And when you speak that, you're going to see that God's word is the one that has the power. It's not just because I say it, Ron. It's not that I say, you know, God says that he's just going to abundantly, you know, pour it on me, shaken down, pressed together, running over, shall it be given to me. That is God's word. But I have to do what he told me to do for that to begin to work and to operate in my life. And, you know, today I am just so thankful that I know the one that is for me. And I'm going to tell you, the Lord showed me this morning that there are those in this room that feel like, well, God knows what I've done, and he could never forgive me. But that's a lie from the devil. Do not take that lie and make that your truth. Do not believe that. That is not in God's word. He is not here to beat us up and punish us. He is here to love us. And this morning, he is drawing us into him. I tell you, that is just, that is my favorite song. I meditate on that song because when we have those days, Thursday I had one of those days, all I wanted to do was cry and feel like I didn't do anything right and feel sorry for myself. And I began to sing this song, God, I know that you are for me. I know that you are for me. So no matter how my feelings or my emotions make me feel, that doesn't come from God. God's emotions, God's feelings towards me are nothing but love and to bless me. And to keep me. So this morning, Lizzie, just sing, let's just sing that chorus one more time. Just close your eyes. Just forget about what you're going to do for lunch, what's coming up this week. And just in this moment, let's just sit here and let's just let the Father love us. And let's just know that He is for us. Amen. Father, just who you are and how much you love us, oh God. We know, Father, that you are for us. 
And we know, Father, that no weapon formed against us shall prosper and that we can speak against words and we can refute those and we can knock those down and send those back to the pit where they came from because we know that you are for us, oh God. You won't leave us. You'll never forsake us, oh God. You'll be there in our good times and in our bad times. And Father, all we have to learn to do is just trust you, to believe your word, and to just praise you for all that you are doing for us. Father, we just honor you and we praise you this morning. As we in the spirit of prayer, let's remember a lady, a request that came in this morning was to a Mrs. Pori. Her son passed away a month ago and needs prayer, having a hard time dealing with it. She works at the hospital. Anna, Anna Bethea passed away uh, last night. Miss Jewell shared that with me this morning, very close friend of hers. Jean Johnson was taken to the uh, hospital last night and needs prayer. Sam and Leona Lee needs prayer and Sister Miller. We know that God is able. Amen. How many need a touch of the Lord today in your body, mind, soul, and body? Why don't you just lift your hands and begin to thank Him. And we just also lift up Michelle Hartley today. Heavenly Father, we pray God today, Lord, right now in the name of Jesus, we pray, Lord, that you will guide the lives of your people today. We thank you, God, as these requests have come in. We pray for Miss Pori today. We ask you, Lord, to, to fill that void in her life. We pray for the uh, Bethea family, Lord. We pray, God, that you will be within the loss of this mom today. We pray for Jean Johnson today. We pray for Sam and Leona Lee and Sister Miller. And we pray for Michelle today, Father. We pray, God, for every family that's represented here today. We speak your healing power into their life. Because your word says that by your stripes we are healed. And we give you praise. And we give you honor. And we give you glory today. In Jesus' name. And everybody said, Amen. Amen. Turn and greet somebody. Let them know that you're glad to see them in the house of the Lord today. Amen. Awesome. Amen. Amen. It's all right. They did a good job. Don't hire them. Hallelujah. The presence of God is in this house, and we're just glad to see you all here today. I know we're getting ready. Everybody's getting geared up for Thanksgiving. All the turkey and the dressings. Amen. And uh, it's just exciting to be there. Um, who's doing, come on, Lindsay, let's do these announcements and share some exciting things about what's happening. Good morning again. Everybody smile at me. Show you pearly white. Okay. Just making sure they're all with me. We've got um, some cool stuff coming up. First of all, we want to announce, you do have your cell phones, even though we are plugged in. Okay. I'll plug that for you. Get it? Ha ha. Get it? Plug for you. Okay. We want you to silence the cell phones because we want to make sure that we make every room for, for the Word of God to come forth, right? Amen. Um, second of all, the ladies, um, there are pumpkin rolls are still are for sale. Beautiful picture. That's so good. <sighs> Wednesday's the last day. We must... Not be upset about that, because all good things must end. <laughs> I had to do it, Sister Sarah. I'm so sorry. But the pumpkin roll, she's asking that all the orders be in by Wednesday night. And then also for the ladies' ministry, um, for next weekend is Harvest Weekend. All right. So with Harvest Weekend, we do provide a meal. So the, all the ladies, if... Um, we're asking that everybody meet in the fellowship hall at 5.30 so we can go over <coughs> the meal plans. If you are unable to meet with um, us at 5.30, um, please see Sister Sarah after church because we want to make sure we have plenty for our guests, right? So if you're bringing a meal, put in double, triple, quadruple, no, sorry. Put in at least double if you are able to. We want you to bring what you can, but we want to make sure that we have enough for our guests as well. Um, and then for the kids' uh, ministry, they are selling the cookie dough and the pizza dough. Miss um, Ruby told me before church we only need 17 more. 
and then we can put our order in. So, you get a tub of cookie dough and pizza dough for how much? Oh, it's pizza. It's an actual pizza. Shows what I know. I'm not very good at that, am I? Are they, they said they're very good. I think Sister Betty said, you said they're really good. They're awesome. See? You don't have to go to Pizza Hut or get your $5 pizza. You can get a whole bunch of them for a low price. So please, please, we need 17 more so that way we can put in everybody's order all at one time. And then, <clears throat> last but not least, for Harvest Sunday, we, y'all have done a great job bringing stuff. I want to thank y'all. You know, we had some donations from Dollar General, right? So we've had, but we still lacking some stuff. I'm about to tell you what they are. We still need cake mix, of course turkey, and don't bring your husbands, women. We don't want your husbands. We want a turkey. Get it? <laughs> Sorry, Johnny. We love you though. We need potato mix. So like for the mashed potatoes, if you bring the instant or the <laughs> sister Sarah, did I embarrass you? Okay. Get back there giggling. And then we need cranberry sauce. So instant potatoes, we need cranberry sauce, coarse turkeys, and then cake mix. Those are the main things that we needed. Did I miss anything? And chicken broth. Got to make stuffing with chicken broth. I think. I think that's what you do with that. All right. So that's it for the announcements. As I said, only Lindsay. Hey, if you didn't get, la if you wasn't here last Sunday morning, you need to get a CD of last su Sunday's message. She spoke to you. Wasn't that awesome? Amen. Amen. That's right. Go ahead. Give the honor where the honors do. Yes, Sunday is coming up is, is Harvest Sunday. I pray that you have been busy about the Father's business, inviting an unchurched family to come and to be with you. And I want to encourage you to be here. Um, I'm going to need the men on Saturday. We're going to be setting up tents in the parking lot Saturday afternoon. Because at 2 o'clock on Saturday, there is a wedding here in the sanctuary. Uh, 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 Josie Huron and John Shield will be getting married at 2 o'clock. And you are invited to the wedding. And so I want you to know about that. It'll be Saturday at 2 o'clock. That's two down. Amen. Praise the Lord. Amen. And uh, we're going. This is a wedding month, and speaking of weddings, we have some newlyweds in the house, and uh, it is um, uh, Candace and Richard Zamora, all the way from California. Would you just stand and let the folks see this fine-looking young couple? Amen. They've been on a they've been on a honeymoon trip to the Caribbean. They've been to Haiti, to to uh, Jamaica, uh, Cozumel. And back to Fort Lauderdale, amen. And uh, they flew in there, and Lindsay picked them up yesterday, and they come in on the ship, and and they come to spend a few days with all of the family here, and they wanted to be with you, and uh, because you learned to love Candace, the time that she has been here in ministry, and we were, I was, and Ty and I were honored to to be able to go out and perform their wedding, and beautiful wedding. Oh Lord and mercy, I'm telling you, uh, it was just. The park was wonderful. I, who picked that? Did you pick that? Candace picked that uh, venue. Uh, beautiful. It was an outdoor wedding and a beautiful uh, setting. But you know what was the most important thing that really impacted me? And I shared with this from last night. See, both of them have been involved in ministry. Uh, Candace has been in Haiti working there. Uh, uh, Richard has been to China, taught English in China for a year. So they've, they're world travelers, you know what I'm saying? And their friends from high school and college and families traveled. I think I've added up eight to ten states in the state of, of the United States flew into that wedding, one from Singapore and one from Haiti. And uh, that was awesome just to a family to, to have that, a couple to come to your wedding. How would you like that? Amen? That's the impact that I believe that God is going to use Candace and Richard in the kingdom of God and I commend you for that and stay faithful to the kingdom and God will honor you when they go back they're going to go back and have Thanksgiving with their families then they're packing up and driving all the way across the United States to Nashville to go to medical school and that's something 
and going to drive all the way into Nashville and be there for a couple of years and work on their uh, finalizing their degree in medical. So when they go back to Missionsville and wherever God wants them to be, amen? So God can raise your children up for the kingdom, amen? And we give God the glory for that in Jesus' name, amen. I just want to say one more thing about next Sunday. Please, I'm asking our church families, make sure that you're here and be part of that because this is an evangelistic tool that God has used since 2008. We have seen families come into the, to the church. We've seen families get saved. It's not a point of somebody getting a turkey, amen? But I've always told you, I'll give a turkey to win a soul for anybody, amen? And so we'd like you to do that and, and be a part of that giving into that ministry but I do want to say we do need to have things ready and set up later in the afternoon after the wedding and get that uh, uh, parking lot set up and ready because we're going to use our own tents this year and we're going to have about four or five of those to put up so we need your help and a wonderful time to be there I want to share something with you this morning as we get ready to give to the kingdom of God it's called The Secret of Faith. I've been sharing now a little, little book. How many was here Wednesday night when I taught on the seed faith? And uh, I, still got my, I still got my seed. still got my... It's, it's shedding. So I think it's fixing to pop open. Changing colors. That is a, a, a redwood. Candace knows what that is. They've been there. And I shared with you that a, a redwood um, cone makes a humongous tree, the seed inside there. And as we plant seeds and trees grow up from our seeds, I shared with this a number of months ago, your seeds are where you're planting. This church and this ministry is planted into the mission fields, Dominican Republic. Somewhere on the island of the Dominican Republic, we have a church there you sponsored with Brother A.T. Lowry back in, in the 90s. We have a church there on that island that we sponsored and is still live and going for Jesus. Amen? We've sent resources and uh, supplies to Haiti. We've sent to, uh, to uh, uh, China, the Bibles to China. Just the other day, we was in the bookstore in Bakersfield, California. I stopped in there. We stopped in there to pick up uh, some uh, items we needed for the weekend. And uh, before I left the register, the lady asked me, she said, would you like to, to buy a Bible to, be, to go to some language around the world? What, what the Lifeway bookstores were doing was everybody that bought a Bible for $5, they were putting the, the, um, in that language, it could be in any language. Their goal was to send over 10,000 Bibles by the end of the year in different languages all around the world. So I looked at planting that seed as I gave that extra $5 at the register, that Word of God. I, I might not be able to go to China, but Richard might, you know what I'm saying? But uh, I might not be able to go to Mexico, but you might, you know. But see, somebody's going to take that Bible and use that Word to spread the gospel of Jesus Christ. That's the seed. Those seeds are in those nations. Those seeds are in our community. Those seeds are at the help center or at the, uh, 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 our cutting-edge food center. Our seeds are at the... Uh, 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 Navajo Nation, which the funds that are being raised through the pumpkin rolls right now are being raised, their stockings being sown, and, and uh, the monies are going to be put with it so they can purchase uh, supplies for all those kids uh, out on the Navajo Reservation this winter. And I, I just want you to understand that seeding is very important. God knew it because He planted those trees, didn't He? Think about it. I remember when we come out of the hurricanes, we had a lot of tree problems around the community. We said, well, I wish we didn't have those trees. Well, God put those trees. Some of those trees there is 100-something years old. Those trees that we just saw recently are, are somewhere close to two to 2,500 years old. But see, those trees that you plant, those seeds, are seeds of faith. Listen. This is the secret of faith. Continue in saying what God said, and I began to share this on Wednesday. So far, two and a half years, the man of God studied the Word of God and made my confession list. He said, many people want to know why it won't work for them when they have not meditated the Word and would not dare say anything contrary to their sense knowledge. They would not dare say, my God was, has supplied all my need according to His riches in, by Christ Jesus. When the rent is due and they don't have the money, sense knowledge would say that would be telling a lie. But how can you tell a lie when you say the truth? 
Think about that a moment. Let me repeat that. But how can you tell a lie when you say the truth? God's Word is truth. Say that with me. God's Word is truth. But my God, say my God, shall supply all my need according to His riches and glory by Christ Jesus. See, the Lord spoke to me, he, the writer here says, the Lord spoke to me about going on a word fast for two weeks. I didn't read anything but the Word of God or something pertaining to the Word. I didn't watch any television, not even a news program for two weeks. I was so excited about the Word at the end of the two weeks that I haven't really cared about reading a newspaper or watching a TV since. I began a process of training my spirit with the Word of God. One day I was confessing the devil flees from me because I resist him in Jesus' name. I suddenly realized that the anointing of God was rising up in me. My spirit had received it, and now it was being manifested in me. In an instant of time, I knew the devil was fleeing from me, and my words took on authority. So can you say amen? See, God's words are filled with faith, and that is how faith comes. It didn't come by watching the doctors or gun smoke. or it, it, it came by the Word of God. Understand, this process of training the human spirit did not work overnight. I didn't say it one day and be full of faith the next. It was a process of weeding our religious tradition from the Word of God. Can I get an amen? We've got to change our mindset. Because, see, if the enemy can tell you, no, you can't plant that seed or you can't give into the harvest of God, you can't bring your tithe to the house of God, and he gets that planted in you because you've got to pay your bill, you've got to do this, you'll always be in that lifestyle. But God wants you to move to another level. Say, I want to go there. Amen. I want to go there and never come back again. Amen. I want to be able to, I want to be, a, I've asked the Lord to do this. I've asked the Lord to make a way that we as a church, that we can seed into ministries. The funds would be there. There would never be any lack. Can just get an amen on that one. So today, as you bring your tithe, as you bring your seed offering, and I'm going to ask you today to seed into this next weekend. Seed into the harvest. Because the harvest is great, but the labors are few. I remember a vision real quickly that the Lord gave my dad. And he's told it to me many times years ago. He said, son, I saw a vision. And he said, I saw a field because he understood what cotton fields. How many knows what cotton fields are? I found out when I was in California they grow cotton. It's not only in the south, all right? So forget that. It's grown in California too. But he said, I saw a field. And he said there was harvesters, there was machines ready to harvest the field. And see, the thing is, God is needing the harvesters, but he needs the seed. He needs the, he needs the crop. How many know you can look out amongst you, there are those that are ready to meet Jesus? How you say that, Pastor? Because they're ready for you to come and say, hey, I want you to come to the house of God. I want you to come to have a Jesus meeting with me. Amen? So I want our ushers to get ready this morning, if you would, and come and, and help us today. But I want you this morning to recognize that in this season, in this Thanksgiving season, don't forget about what God has done for you. And don't forget about what you need to do for your church. Make sure you're taking care of your 40, 50s, and make sure things are taken care of for the kingdom of God and for the work of God in this house. Heavenly Father, I thank you for every gift. I thank you for every giver. I thank you, God, for the word of faith that you have in our hearts, that you have birthed in us. Now, Lord, as we today give this uh, monies from the world system, and we ask you, Father, we put it into the kingdom system, and it's changing hands, and it's going to be multiplied for the kingdom of God. In Jesus' name, amen. God bless you as you give this morning.
Is that your prayer, child of God? It's for the nation. Yes, Lord, that is our prayer. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. That should be our prayer to ask for the nations. I have asked the Lord many times for His divine direction in reaching the harvest in people's hearts and lives. You're here for that reason. Amen. You're here for that. You're you're here because we prayed you here. Amen. Many many years ago. Amen. I do have to receive a phone call last night, and um, I told him just to come on, trust in the Lord with me. Joe and Dolly Mercer will be in service with us tonight. Amen. And so you just come expecting, and we're going to have a healing uh, t- service tonight. Uh, God uses Joe in a powerful way. And in that area, so you be here tonight. Darlene's going to spend some time singing, and uh, they're going to be in Sebring this morning. And they just happened to call me last night. We was just talking, and I said, "Hey, just come on. I trust the Lord with you." Hey, the new evangelist is on worship. Pastor Lindsay, I'm going to tell you something. This is an awesome. Where'd she go? Man, that disappearing act. This is an awesome. Uh, born to worship. Say, I'm born to worship. Uh, I read some of the articles in here. It is some awesome articles. Get this new evangel out there and just help us cover the cost of it. It doesn't matter. We, you know, we pay a dollar apiece for them, and, and you, if you can give a dollar out there, that's all we ask you to do. I want you this morning, I want you to listen to me. I'm going to pick up, with Ed, whenever you're ready. I want to pick up from last Sunday night, but I'm going to sort of uh, re, start over, but not as much. One of the things that when when I um, can you turn that down please when I um, go away I ask the Lord sometime yes it's a time of rest sometime and um, um, but I ask the Lord sometime to to show me things and one of the things He let me do is to as God spoke to to Joshua I want you to look at Joshua chapter six we're going to look at verse one and two but one word we're going to address. I want you to look at Joshua chapter 2. Now, Jericho was securely shut up because the children of Israel, none went out and none came in. And verse 2 says, The Lord said to Joshua, here's the word, see. I want you to say that word with me, see. Now, Joshua had to see something. 
And he said, I've given Jericho into your hand, its king and the mighty men of valor. Now, like I said, when, when I was away, I had the opportunity with uh, Candace's dad and my brother. We went up into the Sierra Nevada mountains where the, red, the big redwoods were. And um, there was a part of that mountain, they call it something, the dome or something anyway. But there's a section of the mountain that just turns into solid rock. And if you kept walking, you would fall thousands of feet off into the valley. But we were brave enough to have a trail on the side, and we got up on the top. And, and up on top of that, that one rock, there was a, like a hole in the rock, and it was full of water. And you could see where the birds had been. You know, you know what I mean? Birds do things, you know what I'm saying? But the thing that, that God had provided a way for them to get water, all right? But what, what I began to, to look at, see, you know, the Lord just spoke to me, said, see, I, I've, I've given the, the land to you. But he said, I want you to see. And it began to look. And Ty and I was taking a ride on um, Thursday. Once we got in Wednesday, we took a little uh, creative ride. You know, it was a, a not a too creative just tie after we went through the curves and the ups and downs and the bumper to bumper traffic in the middle of L.A. on three o'clock in the afternoon. Uh, that is experience. You think you have it tough here? I don't, I've already decided L.A. is not my place. All right. Amen. And uh, these these guys here know what it means. They know they got to leave a, an hour and a half. Candace had it down when she went to her job. She knew exactly what to do. She would walk to a, to a train station, get on the train. She could be at work in 20 minutes, right? 20 minutes. Some people would drive. It'd take them an hour and a half for the same distance, all right? So that's the kind of traffic we were in. And, and the thing is, we were cutting through, and we didn't really, this is funny, we really didn't know where we were, but I had my phone and GPS on. Thank God. And it was telling me where to go. So we got to a road and we turned on it. I actually ended up having to stop like my dad used to. I said, can you tell me how to get the Pacific Coast Highway? Right here. I was already there. I just had to turn left. You know what I'm saying? Anyway, we cut through the Santa Monica Mountains. Has anybody ever seen the Santa Monica Mountains? You've seen them, haven't you? Anyway, they're between that part of California and the coast. We were cutting through there. And as we were going through, we were... Ty was just wanting to ride, but I was stopping taking pictures, you know. You know? And so we were having a, a, a glorious time. So, so uh, we looked through, as we're going through, went through some tunnels, and, and, and then a place come in there. You had this mountain here, and you had this mountain here, and it looked like a smog, you know, saying, well, is that smog or not? Lo and behold, it was the Pacific Ocean. So there was another sea. I'm talking about the ocean, but see, God let us see something that we've never seen in that fashion. So here it was on a mountaintop of rock and an ocean to see, and the Lord began to drop this into my spirit that we as God's children, we have to come to a realization, what are we seeing? Or what do we see? Because see, if we're not careful, we'll get so caught up in our own stuff. Come on, are you hearing me? We'll get caught up in our own stuff that we don't see the, in the, through the eyes of God. And yesterday morning, I, I reckon I, I was ready for it or whatever. Went, fell asleep at 8 o'clock on Friday night and I slept till 5 o'clock. I was wide awake. I just get up, you know, didn't want to disturb her. I get up, I come over to the church and spend some time in prayer, spend some time in reading and, and, and writing what the Lord was having me to give. And a phone rings. Where are you at? She said, you never get up on Saturday morning. <laughs> I love you, baby. She was worried. But I begin to write, and this is what I begin to, the Lord began to give me for you today. We need to get our focus on the harvest and not stuff. We need to get our focus on seeing the harvest. See, when you begin to focus just about you and about your problems, not saying they are not important to you, but your priority should be focused on the kingdom of God. Because see here, child of God, one of these days when the trump of God sounded, all that stuff won't matter. Isn't that exciting? That won't matter. So what are you seeing? As I shared with you earlier, Harvest Sunday is next week. And, 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 and have you witnessed or invited an unchurched friend and family members to be in church with you on that day of the harvest? See, we need to be doing it every Sunday, but this is a special emphasis. But I wrote the statement, as you see on the screen, what do you see? And I put an explanation mark. Are you blinded by your past hurts and wounds 
An, an example of that, have you ever uh, uh, had a, a wound that was cut and, and you just kept picking at it and never would get well until you doctored it or you went to the doctor or whatever and they gave you some medicines to heal that wound and you watched it heal? Did you know your body begins to heal from the inside out? I remember when our oldest daughter was in serious as a five- and six-year-old uh, continually in uh, a serious case of eczema. And we, we did everything we knew to do. We did everything the doctor said to do. But there was a lady in the church that was just had a child and went through that. And, and uh, we began to follow some healthy paths in that area. And we began to do what uh, in the natural way of healing her eczema and, and working with her, uh, her asthma because asthma and asthma went together and, and uh, the process that was happening. And we began to see literally the healing of the inside of those areas on her body. Every place on her, her arms, her legs, and even on her face was there. And the thing is, it would begin, you could literally see the new growth of healing from the inside out. And let me say this to you, child of God. If there is hurts and wounds inside of you, you can't cover them up. Because sooner or later, it will come out again. You've got to look beyond. You've got to allow the healing bomb of all of God, the healing oil to be poured into that wound and, and let the, 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 the oil flow in and heal the anointing oil of God to heal those hurts because sooner or later, you can cover it up. You can be spiritual all you want to. But see, the thing is, if you cover it up and, you, and sooner or later, something's going to happen and it's going to come and it's going to burst wide open again and you've got to start all over again. Can I get an amen? Are you blinded by your own agenda? Are you blinded by your family crisis? I believe if we will focus on the kingdom of God, you will see with godly spiritual eyes. And see, this is where you and I must focus. When I say I, I have to keep my focus in this area too. If I got caught up in stuff, if I got caught up in issues and, and the things like that, you know, uh, and you as well, the thing is we would not see through the eyes of God. In other words, what does God see? He sees your family saved. He sees your family healed. Uh, he sees your family restored. He sees your family set free. Those loved ones, those friends you've been praying for, He he sees them free. Can you say amen? And see, that brings me to that area of passage that, that I want to share with you about. Number one is focus on how you focus. If you focus on the mountain, have you ever had a situation in your life and the mountain is so big that you seem to can't see around the mountain? When we were climbing and, and riding up these mountains, there was places you could see across, but then there was places you couldn't see above. Matthew 11, verse 22 and 25, listen to what Jesus said. Jesus answered and said to them, to his disciples, Have faith in God. For surely I say to you, whoever says to this mountain, Be removed and be cast into the sea, and does not doubt in his heart but believes that those things he says will be done, he will have whatever he says. Therefore I say to you, whatever things you ask when you pray, believe, say that with me, believe that you receive them and you will have them. I like the way the Amplified brings this out, and I want you to listen to this carefully. Jesus replied and said to them, have faith in God. He said constantly, he said constantly have faith in God. You ever had days you get up, boy, I got faith in God, everything's going to be all right, and something that day, sure enough, comes along and knocks you flat on your back. Does that ever happen to you? I'm going to put both hands up. That happens to me. But see, the thing is, I have to step back and say, God, you are in control. I'm constantly going to have faith in you. And then he said in 23, and he amplified, says, Truly I tell you, whoever says to this mountain, be lifted up and thrown into the sea, and does not doubt in all of his heart, but believes that what he says will take place, it will be done for him. For this reason, for this reason, he says, I'm telling you, Otherwise, Jesus always expressed to his disciples and to those who he was teaching. He said, for this reason, I'm telling you, I want you to listen to me. Whatever you ask for in prayer, believe. That means to trust and be confident in what you believe that's going to happen. Have confidence in that, that it is granted to you and you will 
get it. Amen? Here's the principle. If we sometimes believe, we've got the faith to believe, but somewhere in between we start doubting and we, we don't believe it's really going to happen, well, it's not going to happen. And he goes on, he just said, and one, whenever you stand praying, he says, if you have anything against anyone, forgive him and let him drop. Let it drop. That means leave it, let it go, in order that your Father who is in heaven may also give you your own failings, forgive you of your own failings and shortcomings. Just let it go. How many's ever hung on to stuff? Come on, are you hearing me? You hung on to stuff. Say stuff. You've hung on to stuff that it affected your walk with God. Come on. If we hang on to stuff, it don't matter. You can that that uh, a four letter S T U F. Yeah, that's four letters, right? And that that word, that stuff. If you hang on to it, you can put anything you want to in that name. But if you hang on to that, it will affect your prayer. It will affect your prayers being answered. It'll affect your faith. If you're going to get over this mountain, we have to focus. Focus on who He is. Why don't we focus on who Jesus is and not how big our problem is? Woo! I don't know about you, but I, I, I see a lot of times there's problems that try to take over. But the thing is, we have to see how big Jesus is. He's in control. Can you say amen? And secondly, you are too close to something to where you don't see. See, sometimes we don't see that God has given us the level of breakthrough because we are too close to see the breakthrough. Does that make sense? We're so close. And see the thing, sometimes you need some space between your hurt and the circumstances that you're going through. See, if we're not careful, we will be so close. I'm going to say that again. Sometimes we don't see that God has given us the level of breakthrough because we are too close to it to see the breakthrough. We're right on the verge of having a breakthrough in our life. We're right on the verge of having a breakthrough in our family situation. We're right on the breakthrough of having a, a, a breakout in in the growth of the ministry of the kingdom of God and sometimes we don't even see it and we stop right there. Number three says if you, are if you are too far from something you can't see it accurately. Now there was times up on that mountain especially on the rock area we could see but we couldn't see way on the other side of that mountain. But we was traveling down a road and, and time made this trip. We, we talked her into it. Because she don't handle curvy roads and going like this, you know. So we had to get Jim to drive about 10 miles an hour. Now, getting Jim and Doug in the mountains driving 10 miles an hour, that was a job. Am I right, Candace? Am I right? And, it, oh, and Jenny could do it. But anyway, the thing is, we just come across a mountain, and I said, Now, Tom, I want you to look way out over that hill over there. There was a... A log cabin, a brand new log cabin with a green roof sitting on top. I said, do you see the house over there? And it was probably miles away. But see, listen to this. If you're so far from something, you can't see it accurately. See, just because you can't see something, it doesn't mean it's not there. Have the proper perspective. Child of God, in this harvest work of the kingdom of God, and in your own life, begin to see Begin to see. Just because you can't see something now, it doesn't mean it's not there. Have the proper perspective. And number four is elevation. You can see farther if you are elevated. I saw that. When we went up on one, one portion of the mountain, we got over on the edge of the cliff, you could see a long ways. It's like, how many remember after the hurricanes? We used to have some beautiful big oak trees in Hardy County. But after the hurricane, you found property and houses that you never knew was there. You could drive through the neighborhoods and you could, through the county, and you could see miles and see lights that you never knew was there. But see, because those trees were gone, you were elevated. Elevated. Ephesians chapter 2, verse 6. Is the Word of God says, And hath raised us up together and made us sit together in heavenly places in Christ Jesus. The Amplified says it this way. And he raised us up together with him and made us sit down together, otherwise giving us a seating with him. How many wants to be elevated with Jesus? 
Come on, this is where we need to be in our life and to walk with Him. He raised us up together with Him and made us a, a seat, let us sit down together, otherwise giving us a joint seating with Him in the heavenly sphere. There's a place that God is wanting us to get where we can see. Otherwise, He said, by virtue of our being in Christ Jesus, the anointed one. By being in Jesus Christ, we are elevated. You do not have to live in the world system. Yeah, you might be living in the world, but you don't have to live in the world's attitudes. Yes, you might not be, you may be living in the world, but you can live in an elevation of seeing beyond the problems, seeing beyond the circumstances, seeing beyond the mountain. Can you say amen? Elevated position, amazing how your future looks. How many's looking for the future? How many want to see the good things of the future? If you could today, could you, could you just stop a moment, shut your eyes, and begin to think about the goodness of God and what He's done for you and how that you would, would, would perceive how Jesus would want your life, your family's life, and you begin to see that and you begin to believe that that could happen. Can you say amen? That's faith. Come on. Fifthly. Illumination, how something is viewed. Something's illuminated. Otherwise, it is important that the Word of God is the lamp unto our feet and light unto our path. Psalms 119, 105. Your Word is the lamp to my feet and a light to my path. Listen to that. The Word of God. God's Word, like a lamp, illuminates. It helps us to discern spiritual danger so we can avoid it, and it points us in the right direction to take our lives. It lights the paths we take through life. Isn't that awesome? Come out of darkness and come into light. If you're walking in, a, in the shadows in the gray area of life, take this Word. As the Word says, your, the Word of God, your Word is a lamp to my feet and a light to my path. Do you remember when you used to take, when you was a boy, and you would take a flashlight and you go outside, and before you turned the light on, it was pitch dark. But you'd take that flashlight and you would take and walk where you could go. How many like to play with flashlights when you were kids? Oh, come on now. The twins, when they were little, uh, I took Trey, Trevor uh, hunting with me. And he was four years of age. Me and him went to the woods together. I gave him a flashlight. I carried the guns, and I had my flashlight. And it was pitch dark that morning. I don't know why I'm thinking about it, but it just keeps coming to me this week. The thing is, we had to walk. We had to drive in. It was dark. We had to find the path where it was going. But we, he had a flashlight, and I had, it didn't scare him one bit. And here we went. We went through the pass and went to where we need to go and, and sit down. But see, the thing is, that's the same way that God, it doesn't matter what those woods may look like. It may not, may, it don't matter how the situations in life look like. They may look scary, but if you'll take the Word of God, your Word is the lamp to my feet and the light to my path, God will guide you through it. Can you say amen? Hallelujah. Then there's the subjective. And lastly, what we bring to it. Are we farsighted? Are we nearsighted? See, I'm nearsighted. I take these off, and you, you're, 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 you're fuzzy out there. I put them on. You're pretty clear. See, I'm nearsighted. I can't tell you why God hadn't given me clear view vision, but I know this. I thank God for the glasses. So does my wife when we're driving. Because I can't see way out there. Now, I can see up close. Farsighted or nearsighted or blurred vision or night vision. How many have noticed as you got a little older, night vision, the car lights bother your eyes? Come on, you hearing me. I, hey, I got my hand up. So here, here's the thing, what we have to recognize. What do we bring to it? What is it that we bring to see what we can do for our lives, our families, and the church for the kingdom of God? Don't state it again. What is it that we bring to see what we can do for our lives? What is it that we can change? What is it that we can make a decision about today in this harvest season? What is it that we can see and change for our families? How that we can stop and look at, Lord, I, I don't need to go this path. I don't need to live this way. I need to walk in the path of the, of the light of the Lord Jesus Christ and, and, and also for the church. What is it that I can see for the harvest, for the winning souls to the kingdom of God and believing that 
God is going to do the work. See, here's the principle, and I'll remember this very clear. Years ago, when I was a young pastor in, in, in coming to pastor a church, it was here in Wachula, I would be bothered that someone didn't accept Jesus Christ in the altars in those times. And see, the thing is, the Holy Spirit spoke to me. He said, if you give them the truth, then it's their decision what they do with it. Oh, you hear what I'm saying? So I give you the truth. If you take it and you use it properly, God will help you to see what to do with your life. God will help you to see what to do with your family and help you to do what to do with your church. Can you say amen? So God told Joshua, See, I have given you into the land into thine hand. I want to read that passage of Scripture from the message. I want you to listen to this. Jericho was shut up tight. As a drum because of the people of Israel. No one going in or going out. God spoke to Joshua. Look sharp now. Other words, see. He says, look sharp. Look to your neighbor and say, look sharp. Look sharp now. I'm already given to you along with his kings and his crack troops. Here's what you are to do. March around the city, all your soldiers. Circle that city once. Repeat this for six days. Have seven priests carry seven ram's horn trumpets in front of the chest. In the seventh day, march around the city seven times. The priests blowing away on the trumpets. And then a long blast on the ram's horn. When you hear that, all the people are to shout at the top of their lungs. The city wall will collapse at once. All the people are to enter every man straight in. Now, here's what he said. Joshua, God spoke to Joshua. He said, now look sharp. He says, see, I'm going to tell you what to do. Child of God, stop and see and listen to what God is speaking to your life and do it. Child of God, stop and listen to what God is speaking to your family and do it. Quit dealing with the stuff. Quit walking in all the problems in, in life. Stand firm and then also begin to look and see, look sharp what God wants to do with your church, what He wants to do with you as a body to reach the harvest for the kingdom of God. Can you say amen? Brother Ed, if you'll help me, please. Let me tell you, yesterday morning, as I, that early morning, I was in here and I was thinking and meditating on today. And I said, Lord, what is it you want to do? What do you think about yourself? He went to the cross so that you may have eternal life. But you have to see yourself say, come on, are you listening to me? You've got to think about what Jesus saw. See, those of you here today that are truly saved, born again, that means you have a relationship with Jesus Christ and you're living a life of Christ to the best of your ability. But remember, Jesus was the only perfect man. He was the Son of God. There's none of us perfect. See, we have the grace of God, but that does not give us the free right to live any way we want to. We must, be a, uh, uh, we must live a holy life because Christ is holy. Because, see, the thing is, Jesus was in that garden that day, and He was praying. And this is what's so beautiful. He saw. God spoke to him and told him to look and to see beyond the cross and see child of God as God spoke to Joshua he said now look up look sharp God spoke to Jesus and said look up look sharp there's the ideals that I'm going to reach there's going to be the losses that we're going to reach there's going to be the Marys there's going to be the graces there's going to be all the different names he saw you and I 
He looked beyond everything that he was fixing to face, and he knew what he was fixing to face because it was prophesied. He knew the word, and he knew what was going to happen. But he saw. He saw. He saw through the spiritual eyes. He said, I, he, in his flesh, his flesh was saying, Lord, take this away from me. Not my will, but thy will be done. But I will do it. Child of God, what are you willing to sacrifice for the harvest? What are we willing to sacrifice for our families? What are we willing to sacrifice to see loved ones and neighbors and friends saved for the kingdom of God? Come on, singers. What are we willing to see? Are we so caught up in our own self? It's easy today, isn't it? See, we are to walk in repentance and know through Christ Jesus we can be forgiven over in Matthew chapter 8, verse, chapter 5, verse 8. Listen to this. Listen to this passage. You see it on the screen. I'm going to give you the Amplified. It said, blessed, happy, revival, fortunate, spiritually prosperous, possessing the happiness produced by the experience of God's favor and especially conditioned by the revelation of His grace regardless of their outward conditions are the pure in heart for they shall see God. Isn't that awesome? The seeing of what God wants to do. And then he gives us over in Revelations chapter 1 verse 7. Actually 22 verse 4. And they shall see his face. John saw this and he said, and he showed, verse 1 he said, and he showed me a pure river of water of life, clear as crystal proceeding out of the throne of God and of the Lamb. In the midst of the street of it, and on either side of the river was there the tree of life, which bare twelve manner of fruits, and yielded her fruit every month. And the leaves of the tree were for the healing of the nations. And there shall be no more curse, but the throne of God and the Lamb shall be in it, and His service shall serve Him. And they shall see His face. Hallelujah. I want you to stand with me this morning, and I, I want you to think about what I just read to you. I don't know about you, but I want to see Jesus. But he says that we shall see his face. You shall see him. The child of God, how many has loved ones, friends, neighbors? Friends and neighbors that, would, that you know that need the Lord. They need to see him. This is what we're here for. Can I tell you what, child of God, this is why Sister Ty and I are here for. We're not here for us. We're not for, here for any particular family. We're here for the kingdom of God. Are you hearing me today? I come into this house today with anointing and the boldness of His Spirit. I am here for the kingdom of God. And if you want to get a hold of it with me to see the harvest, to see the souls saved in the kingdom of God and get rid of stuff, get rid of hurts, get rid of wounds, let's get up and rise up and see the heart of God and see the face of Jesus Christ. Because here it is, child of God, the trumpet is going to blow very soon. And we must be ready. Because we all will see him one day. One of two things. He's going to say, well done, thy good and faithful servant. Or he says, sorry, I never knew you. Where are we at today? Let's sing it, ladies. Sing it. Mine. 
If you, if you want to come and pray, you come. You want to come and dedicate your heart to the Lord or rededicate your life to the Lord, you come right now. So patient, so gracious, so merciful and true, so wonderful in all you do. You feel me. The Holy Spirit is working across this room. Lord, we worship you. He's want us to remind him, remind you of who he is today. With every head bowed and every eye closed, you say, Pastor, this word is spoken to my heart today, and I just need prayer today. I'm not going to call you out. I'm not going to embarrass you. Would you just lift your hand and say, Pastor, will you pray for me? Thank you, Lord, for these hands that are going up all across this room. Yes, Lord. Now, Lord, we pray this morning. We pray for every individual that's lifted their hands. And, Father, we know that you've got a plan and you've got a purpose. Lord, it's, it's a heart thing. It's not a show thing. It's a heart thing in our hearts. That we be focused. That we focus and see. See what you're wanting to do in our lives, in our families, in our church. Now, Lord, we just commend them to you. Now, Lord, I pray for every family represented here right now. I pray, God, that not by might nor by power, that by your Spirit, those that are home today for many reasons. Lord, I pray, God, that you will just reach down in their homes right now. We pray for our loved ones. We pray for those that, Lord, that you have saved through this ministry, Lord. I pray, God, that you will raise them up. We pray that your, the children will come home. And, Lord, I thank you, God, for what you're doing. We're going to see what you're going to do in these days ahead. Sing it, ladies. Lord, I thank you, Jesus. Now I want you to just lift your hands and thank Him for the Word. Heart be this love is oh, so yes. deep. His I love is so stand. deep, more than you can stand. Melt in His, Melt in his peace. Just be overwhelmed today by His love. Father, we thank you, Lord, that you sent your Son to remind us of who you are. Today, as you leave this congregation, as you leave this sanctuary, I hope that you can see much clearer. Amen? That is so important. God bless you. Go in Jesus' name. Find somebody. Love them. Be back tonight. Joe and Darlene Mercer is going to be with us. Just a special surprise we worked out last night. You don't want to miss that service. Be about the Father's business. God bless you. Next Sunday, bring your loved ones. Bring your families here. Yes.